Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Survival Series. Today I'm going to be going over the rules of three, the three minute rule, the three hour rule, the three day rule, and the three week rule. I'm also going to be going over how to make this mini five piece survival kit, so you guys should stay tuned to the end to watch that, it's also pretty cool. Also thank you to for 113 subscribers, I'll talk more about that in a little bit, so let's get into the video. Before we continue and get into the video, I want to say a quick thank you to the 100 subscribers. Now it's 113 at the time of recording. So I made this little play button for us. It's pretty nice. I think I got the Woodburn 100 subscribers. I just want to thank you all. Like, 7,000 people have watched my channel. I think that's insane for this little small channel. I think it's absolutely insane. I want to thank all you... All of you people who have subscribed, who have watched my videos, who have liked, I want to thank you all so much. It means so much to me. May God bless you. So let's get into the video. The first of the rule of threes is uh, you can only survive three minutes without oxygen to the brain or in icy water. So this one is pretty, pretty self-explanatory if you're, like, drowning or... Uh, Something else has happened to your head, and you're not getting oxygen, your brain cells are going to die away, and it could kill you, or turn you into a carrot, basically. And, also, uh, icy water saps all the, the warmth out of your body, which can kill you in, as mentioned in some other videos, in like a minute in the frigid Nigerian sea. So, that's a good thing to be careful of, but there are just some situations out of your control in this aspect of this rule. Okay, next up, on, this is number two of the uh, rules of three. This is shelter. You will die in harsh conditions if you do not have shelter. So, that's like, see, this wall here, with the power of editing, now this wall is a, a desert and it is also a icy plain. So you definitely want to make sure you find somewhere that blocks the wind. It is also a very nice uh, defensible location just in case, you know, something goes awry. So when it comes to water, this is the third point of the threes rule. So this is three days without water. So... You can survive, like, if you got shelter, if, well, if you're breathing, of course. But if you don't have water, your body can't function, because you're literally 70% water, so. <coughs> so, we have this pond, nice pond here, for reference, but this can also uh, be, like, little streams around, uh, creeks, rivers, lakes, bigger ponds, like, stuff like that. You can also get water from certain types of plants, such as, uh, grapevine if you like cut a little notch in it the sap is basically like water also different types of berries also give out water also if you jig in also rainwater is a good thing as well to do because rainwater is basically f fresh pure and you don't even have to filter it if you catch it in a clean container but with all these different types of water sources especially with this pond right here you definitely want to filter it because you never know what could be lurking in Suspicious pond water like this. Now, food is the fourth part of the uh, three rolls. So, you can live three weeks without food if you have water and food. I mean, uh, yeah, water and shelter. So, what we have here, we have rose hips. These are edible. Uh, they're probably not the best right now at this time, early October to be eating. But, like, you can find them anywhere. There's also other types of plants and whatnot. There's also deer you can eat and all kinds of stuff like that. So, you can, like, you're still going to be hungry even if you're not going to eat food for a week, no matter what, if you have water. But food is probably the least concerning thing if you're in a short-term short emergency. Another great wild food source, if you can find it, are wild apples. So, this is the apple tree I featured a few videos ago. These apples are nice and pretty good. Um, that's a pretty good apple right there. Oh yeah. So, anyways. <clears throat> another great wilderness survival food, but you definitely want to cook them. As you can probably tell from this tree. It's acorns. 
fact, in fact, if many of you didn't know, acorns are actually edible. You just have to uh, boil them repeatedly in baths of water to remove the uh, the bitter acid in them. Otherwise, these things won't taste very good. So you want to make sure the inside of them is about this color right here. Otherwise, that's how you know you got a good acorn. Also, um, I have a video coming up on cooking acorns pretty soon, so you guys should look for that soon. Also, another good wild food that would be nice to have is grapevines. This is also where you can get the water from if the uh, sap is flowing. So, that's that's a thought if you guys want more different variety of wild foods. Now, this is probably not the best time to get them in late fall. Probably early, like, August, September time is a good time to get these. So, yeah, that will be about it for the food section here. Alright, last up here we're going to talk about the five C's of survival. So this is an easy five piece uh, survival kit you can make. And so we're, first off we're going to start with the first C which is cutting. So honestly I'd recommend like a small pocket knife or something like this case, good quality knives. And then like something like this mini hatchet, it's got like, it's got knife blades, it's got a saw, it's got uh, fish filleting knives, that's a good thing to have handy. So the next thing is combustion, so I just have this ferro rod here, you can also substitute this for like matches or a lighter or something, or you could add all of them up together if you wanted to. So the third part is cover, so I have this rain poncho here, this can also double as a shelter with these little loops, or you could like make a shelter out of one of these uh, nitro pack uh, emergency blankets. Also to go with the combustion you can have like some dryer lint or something to start your fire easier. And uh, next up is container. This is the fourth thing. So we have this little pot here with a silicon cup. This would be good for boiling water and making like soups. We also got a little 3D printed spoon here. But if you just want like a container to store water in, like a vacuum sealed bottle bottle like this Stanley here, this would be a good thing to have on hand. And finally, cordage. This is the fifth thing, the fifth C. So this is just some simple twine. You can substitute this for 3 8 rope or 7 16 or like thinner, thicker stuff. I like this because you can double as a fire starter and it's easy, like it's cheap. You can just cut off like strands that you need, so you don't have to like tie a bunch of knots. So that about do does it for this survival kit here. It actually all fits into this bag right here, this BSA bag. And it's very easy, you can carry it on all of your different outings and stuff. So that's about it for the 5 C's of survival kit. I think that'll about do it for this episode of the survival series. Well, I think that'll about do it for this episode of the Survival Series. I want to thank you all so very much for watching this episode. God bless you, and good night.